Daniel here for Tabletop for One. Please join me at the table as I teach and play through Ahau, Rulers of Yucatan. And thank you for joining me for this tutorial and solo playthrough of Ahau, Rulers of Yucatan, designed by Tomas Ola and published by Aperion Games. And Grand Gamers Guild was the one who provided me with this review copy to provide a tutorial solo playthrough for you here. Now in Ahau, you are a member of a royal Mayan family that you're trying to expand your influence in the region, different uh, cities. You'll be worshiping the different gods at various temples and expanding your empire. And let's go ahead and go into setup here. Now the first thing you want to do is lay out the game board here and you're going to place it on the side that shows the two and three player icons here. We will be setting up mostly as if it was a two player game. Now one of the things you have to do is you have to put all the pyramid tiles inside this bag here except for some. Any pyramid tiles that show the uh, 5p icon on them, 5 player icon on them, you're going to remove those and keep those out of the bag. And the starting pyramid tiles, these wild tiles here that show all the colors and the symbol in the corner, you're going to set those aside. Those will be used in just a minute. Next, we're going to set up the buildings here. And what you have to do is you have to take out the ones that show the five player icon on there as well. And number 16, the Royal Palace. You'll take that one and remove that. That will not be used in solo play. The rest of them you're going to shuffle up and you'll place two of them face up in the right two slots on the building track here. And then you're going to place one in each of the regions. You'll see these regions are numbered. There's only five regions in the solo mode. So you place one in each region, just like so. These will be used later when you capture a region. The rest of them, you'll just place in a stack right here. The god tiles here, you're going to randomly place on the board and you'll place them in each of the city spaces here. The city spaces are all named, so you just randomly place them. The production site discs, these round discs here, you'll randomly place them in the circle areas on all the spaces on the board. And then the last one you place, you're gonna place this at the very top of this round tracker here where it shows a circle with one dot in the middle. That'll be placed right there. You'll have a variety of wooden resources. These will be placed off to the side. The little cut a tune marker here, you'll place this in the number one spot on the, this track here. There's only three spots there, we'll place it at the top. It <laughs> looks like I'm missing one of the city tiles here, we'll place it right there. Now you have these pyramid or temple tiles here that fit together and stand up like this. I'm not going to be using these here, I'll be using the flip side here where you're going to lay in the tile that goes there. So we'll set these up here. It doesn't matter which order they are set in, so whichever one you want to, but you just set them like this. And then you randomly draw five of the temple scoring tokens and you'll place those at the top here. These indicate how these score. Then you're gonna lay out these five cards here. These are the player aids, but they're also your starting resources for the game and shown at the bottom. And those five starting tiles that I had you set aside, you're gonna randomly place these on the different spaces here, just like that. Then you'll take the six personality cards. These are the AI personality cards. You're gonna shuffle these up and then you're gonna draw one for the AI. And so this will be the one for the AI here. And so whichever one it corresponds with, you're gonna do two things. You're gonna locate the matching card. You'll see that this icon here matches this here. So you'll locate that card and that'll be added to the AI's hand. On top of that, you look at the most preferred god. That This is most preferred and least preferred here. So the most preferred god is this god here. And you choose that tile that has that one for that god. So you're going to give this god, this, or give the AI this tile, get rid of this card. And then from that, you get to choose for yourself which one you want. I will choose this one here. This will be my starting card. I will also get the starting resources. And we'll set those here for now. I'll set this aside. And so we'll remove these here. We don't need these anymore. And then of the remaining roll cards here, the AI had this one, this roll card, so it won't be part of this. You're gonna shuffle these up and then you're gonna draw three of them. You're gonna set these aside. These will be the three that you get to choose from for your roll card later. And next you're gonna choose colors for you and the AI. 
and I've chosen this tan color for me and the red color for the AI. The AI will get this board here, it shows the one player icon at the top, so we'll place that here, and then you get one of the other boards, and we'll place this here. You can choose the night side of the board if you'd like, but we will be doing the day side of the board here. The night side's for a more advanced game. And then you're gonna give the AI this resource tracker here. So this will track its resources. You'll use this brown marker here to mark the space and it'll start with three resources, just like I get to start with three resources. Both the AI and myself will get a sword icon. It starts at the bottom here. You can set these 100 tokens near the zero track. If one of us passes 100 or 200, we'll be using those tokens. We have our standees here that we'll just set aside right here. Then we're going to need some of the player markers here. So one of mine and one of the AIs, they're going to be stacked with the AIs on top on the war tracker here, the conflict tracker. And then the other one, both of these are going to go to the zero spot on the score tracker. It doesn't matter which one's on top. All the AI's workers and other player tokens will just go in a pile here. And I have mine as well. And then you're going to choose a difficulty level for the AI. It's going to be corresponding to two different things. One, it'll determine how many markers it starts already on the temples here. And then it also determines how many points it scores for buildings when it builds buildings. So I'm going to choose easy, which means that it's going to get one of its markers on its lowest rank god on its card here. So this is this god here, which is this one here, and you place it right in the middle. As for me, I do not get any player markers on the temples at the beginning of the game. And the last part of setup here is that you're going to draw 10 tiles and randomly place them on the board. These will serve as your first tiles of the game, get replenished every round, so keep that in mind. Just like that. And then we will shuffle the AI's deck to get the AI's deck ready to go. All right. Now the goal in a how is to get the most points at the end of the game. You're going to be gaining points by doing various actions. You'll see that there's these numbers here in the, the brown background blocks, just like right here as well. There's some here. Th those things will give you points as you get them. There's other ways to gain points as in the scoring of the temples during the Ka'atun celebration. And then summoning gods can often give you points as well. And sometimes winning conflicts can. There's also certain buildings that are going to afford you points like this one here, which gives you an additional point when you have a majority of an area. Now I am going to be teaching you a variety of the general rules for the game and the flow of the game at this start here, but a lot of the stuff is going to be taught during the playthrough. Because uh, for the AI, there's a lot of uh, flow chart kind of uh, actions where you have to determine priorities and that sort of thing. And it's something that you're going to have to reread multiple times as you play the game. So I will explain those as they happen. Now the general flow of the game is this. You're going to choose two cards from your deck, and these co cards correspond to numbers here. You'll choose one to be on the left side, and then one to be on the right side. The one on the left tells you which region you want to go to, and the regions are all numbered. So in this case here, I would want to go to one, and that would cause me to move my standee to that spot there. But the AI is also going to draw two cards. So we draw the first card, that'll be the left card, and it's a six. And then the second card is a one. So in this case here, what happens is there is no six region in the two player and solo mode. So for the AI, these actually get swapped. So now in this case here, we are going to have what is called a conflict because his standee here is going to move to this space. And now we're in the same region and we can't be. And so when a conflict happens, you're going to need to determine the military strength of both sides. You count the right hand number along with any weapons that they have here. And they can have a maximum of 10 weapons if this is flipped over to the five side and at the top. In this case here, we both have zero weapons. And my card chosen was a three, whereas his was a six. So in this moment here, he's going to win the conflict because he has more military strength than me. Now, when somebody wins a conflict, they get to move their might marker up one space on the track. So in this case here, the AI would move its one space and it would gain this bonus here. There are a variety of bonuses here on the left. This one here is to gain a tile from the bag. 
This is to gain a resource of your choice. This is to lay down a worker, which I'll explain in a little while. This one's to gain two tiles from the bag, two resources of your choice, points, three tiles from the bag, three resources of your choice, and more points. Now the loser of the conflict gets to gain one weapon from, from the loss. So in this case here, I would gain one weapon. The loser of the conflict also has to move to an The loser of the conflict also has to move to an adjacent region. So at this point, I would choose a different region. And let's see, this is my standee here. And I choose this one instead. And the reason why I would choose this one is because it has this tile here, which corresponds to this tile here. And so I'd like to have similar tiles. And I'll explain why when we get to tile placement. Once all conflicts have been resolved and each of the players get to choose a tile from that region, not a building tile, but a pyramid tile. So the AI would choose from these two. Now the AI is going to choose the one that matches its pr most preferred god, which neither of these do. Then it would choose one that matches the most colors, or the same color uh, that's built in its pyramid. It doesn't have any built in its pyramid. So in that case there, it goes to the one on the left. So he would gain this one here, adding it to his supply. Me on the other hand, I want this one here, so I'm gonna add this one to my supply. Then we get to take turns based off of the lowest region first. So in this case here, the AI gets to go first. And the first thing you do on a turn is the AI is gonna place a worker. And this is where some of the flow chart choice comes in because he's gonna choose to place a worker based off of uh, multiple criteria. So first he's gonna look at whether or not there's a building tile still available in that region. If there is, he's gonna try and place a worker so that he can gain that building tile. Now the way you gain a building tile is having a worker in each of the cities that surround that region. So as you can see here, we have one, two, three, four cities that surround this region here on number one. So he would choose one of those. Now, since there's four of them that are empty, he's gonna go on to another criteria. So his next criteria is if there's an adjacent city that does not have any of his workers, and that is also adjacent to a different region that still contains a building tile. And so all of these apply to that because these two, or these three here are adjacent to region two, and these two here are adjacent to region five. So all those cities, once again, are still tied up. With that being the case, he's gonna start breaking ties. He first chooses a city that matches a god with the most tiles built in his pyramid, but he doesn't have any built in his pyramid yet. So next he's gonna choose his most preferred god. So this god here, and there is a city there. So in this case here, we place the worker. Now all workers placed have to be stood up. So you can't lay them down. There are various times throughout the game where you can lay them down. When you do that, the worker then counts as two instead of one. And that will come into play with various actions, especially when it comes to area majorities, as well as producing resources from the production sites around the board. Now, once the AI has placed its worker, it's gonna try and summon the god of that city that it placed. And this is the rain god here, but it'll only summon a god if it has a tile in, in its pyramid that matches. It does not currently, so it does not summon a god. Now it's gonna move on to build or produce, and the AI is always gonna to choose to build first if it can. Now, the way you build is you can build as many tiles as you like, as many workers as you have in the city that you placed a worker. So he only has one worker, so he can only build one tile. Now the way the AI builds is different from uh, the way I build. I'll explain my build in a second. But the, the way AI builds, follow these, these numbers here. You'll see one, two, three, four, five, and then six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. So the AI is going to build this tile first and then work its way across. Once it gets to five here, it'll build a building instead, and then it'll keep going. Now, if the AI can build multiple tiles because it has multiple workers, but it doesn't have enough tiles to build, it'll gain fame instead, so keep that in mind. And so when you build on your pyramid here, it's gonna cost resources. Now, this first tells you that it costs one resource. On the bottom here, each of these costs one resource. Buildings themselves have a resource cost at the top here, specific resources. And now the AI doesn't, doesn't care about colors because he just needs resources in a general sense. So all of these are gonna cost one to build. These will cost two each to build here. 
and then these ones will cost three each and these ones four. Now when it's building the threes and the fours, if it doesn't have enough resources, it will trade in two tiles to gain an extra resource. That is an option for the AI. And he'll only do that if he's just missing one resource. If he's missing more than one resource, he won't do that for the third level. But for the fourth level, he'll do that twice if he needs to. Now for me, the cost is different. Uh, of course, at the bottom here, it's one per tile. But now on the second level, I have to have two different resources to build one of these. Then the third level, I have to have three different resources. And the fourth level, I have to have all four different resources to build that last tile. Now, when I build, I don't have to build in order. So I can start on the right here or the left here. But I do have to build the two base blocks underneath the one above it in order to build that next level. So if you're wanting to get to the top, you have to build everything. Now there's another option that the AI or the player can do, and that is produce. When you produce, you're gonna take one of the tiles that is next to the city that you placed a worker in, and then you'll count how many workers you have that is next to that particular production site. So you look at both the cities that are next to it, count how many workers you have and gain that many of that resource. So this is the white resource here. You gain all that. And when you deplete a production site like this, you'll take this and you'll place it on the next slot on the tracker here. Now, when the, when the final one gets placed on this 2P symbol here, so after four de production sites are depleted, at the end of that round, we will go into a, what is called a Ka'atun celebration where we will score based upon our participation in the temple. But before I talk about that, let me talk to you about summoning gods. Now, when you have tiles inside your pyramid and you place a worker, let's say I placed a worker here on this god here, I can choose to summon the god. And so there's a, a variety of things that happen when you summon a god. It depends on the god that you summon. But the first thing you get to do when you summon a god is you get to place one of your player markers on the temple that matches that god. So in this case here, I'd be placing on this one. And you place it on the leftmost spot there, and if there's points under that spot, you gain those points. So I'd gain two points there. Now when you summon a god, you're gonna check out your guide here. Now the AI's guide is different, so you have to check the AI in the rule book for how they summon the, the gods. But for me here, in this particular god is the jaguar god of the underworld. And it says, remove one of my workers adjacent to a production site matching the color of any tile used in summoning and gain one fame for each action strength. You may advance one space on the might track. So the way you determine action strength is by how many tiles in your pyramid that have that God's face on it. So in this case here, I have two. Also, you can spend tiles from your supply to augment that summoning as well. Also, if you want to summon a god that you don't have tiles in your pyramid for, you can just spend tiles, but you don't get to place one of your markers on the temple, so it's not very beneficial. But in this case here, if this was the case, I have two of the jaguar symbols here, so my action strength would be two. So following this here, I would remove one worker. Let's say I had, or yeah, let's say we remove this one here. I would remove him, assuming that this color matched one of these two production sites, and then I would gain fame for each action strength. So in this case here, I had two action strengths, so I gained two fame, and then I can move one space on the might track. And so there are a variety of gods here, but the, the one of the most important things to understand is summoning those gods based off of tiles in your pyramid will get you on the temples here. And that is extremely important because when you get to the Ka'atun celebration, which happens up to three times during the game, you can score a lot of points this way. And so what happens here, let's say I had set up like this and the AI had a couple more here like this, and maybe I had gained one here, all right? And so the way these work during the Ka'atun celebration is you're gonna go over each one and score each one. Now this far left one here, says gain one fame for each temple that scored this celebration. So as you can see, if there is a player marker on the temple, then the temple scores for this celebration. So all five of these would score. So then this would grant five fame and it grants it to whoever is here. So in this case here, 
the AI would, get, would gain five points. This next one here grants points based off of how many buildings are built on a player board. Now, here's the thing. It doesn't matter who win here. You count the player board that has the most buildings on it. So let's say I had built five buildings here and the AI was the only one with a marker here. Then the AI would score the five points and I wouldn't. This next one here shows uh, how many different tiles a person has in their supply. So in this case here with the AI, they have uh, two different tiles here. And I, ha I, if these were in my supply, I would have only one type of tile. And so we would score based off of his. And since we both have player markers there, we each gain two fame. This next one here is how many different resources somebody has in the supply. If we're scoring off of the AI scorecard, it's every, uh, one fame every three resources. Now, if it, if it was this case where I still had these three resources, then we'd score off of this, and this would be three points for me there. And this last one here is how many different pyramid tiles in a pyramid that have been built. Again, it doesn't matter whose it is, you look for the one that has the most, and you score off of that. So you can gain, you know, upwards of 10, 20 points per celebration, but that's not all. On top of that, you score all the cities where you have workers. You, what you're gonna do is look for majorities. If you have the majority in a city, then you gain two points. If you're tied, you gain one point. And the same goes for the AI. So you definitely wanna spread your workers around and you can gain a lot of points this way, 10, 15 maybe even, for having that many workers on the board. Of course, that means you may want to be able to lie down some workers and make them worth two workers instead of one, or fight the AI for various areas and that sort of thing. Now, a couple other things that you may need to know. If you're at the end of your turn and you have less than two cards left in your hand, you will need to take your discard pile and gain it back and you can start over again. Of course, it works the same way for the AI. The AI will then reshuffle its discard pile into its deck. There are some other cards that are called the roll cards that provide bonuses for that round. So this one here gives plus one action strength to the AI for the summoning of that round. And so they work for both the number and that bonus just for that round, so keep that in mind. But you can only have one roll card ever. And the last thing I wanna mention is that these building tiles have a variety of passive bonuses and stuff like that along with gaining different bonuses for placing them. And this icon here with the question mark inside a card, that's when you gain a roll card. All right, and with that, we are ready to start. So I think for my first action, I wanna get this tile here, because I wanna be able to summon this god later. This god lets you lay down workers. I think I'm gonna go for a an area majority strategy, try to lay down workers all over the place and that sort of thing because I'm gonna try and gain this building here, giving me one more point when I have majority, and I'm gonna try and gain this one here. So I'm gonna to go to the number two spot, and I really wanna go, so that means I am going to play my six card as my military strength. So there we go. And now we flip over the AI's card, and they're choosing one as their location, so we're not gonna have a conflict. Six is their strength, so that means that they get to go there, and I get to go here. And now we get to gain our tiles. Of course, he's gonna gain this one here as I showed earlier. And this one here, I'm gonna gain this one. Now he's gonna place his worker, and as uh, I mentioned earlier, it'll be this one here this time. Now he can't summon that god because he doesn't have any tiles in his pyramid, but he is going to build. So he's gonna build, he can only build one because he has one worker in that city where he placed a worker. And he's going to build this tile here. Now this is a wild tile. When I build a wild tile, I have to use the resource that I use to, to pay for that tile, and that tile becomes that color. Now for the AI, he's gonna choose a resource color that gives him the most fame. See, when you place a tile, you're able to gain fame based on whether the tile matches by icon or by color to adjacent tiles it's next to. Now in this case here, He's, he's not gonna match up to anything. So he's gonna choose based off of the most color in his reserve. Now he has a black tile in his reserve, so it'll be the black resource that goes on that spot there. And once he's done with his build, he discard his cards here. We can set these aside. And now it's my turn, and so I'm gonna place a worker. I think I wanna place a worker here because it's bordering three places here, and I think that's a good idea. 
And then, then I'm not going to summon a god, obviously. But then I will build a tile, I think. I will build the jaguar here. Oh, I did forget something. The AI built this here, so it gains movement on the track, and it moves up one space, which gives it a tile from the drawback, so it'll gain this one here. Now, when I do my build right now, I will place it right here. It's gonna cost me one resource. I will use the yellow resource, because I'm saving these two for that building later. So I'll place it here, and I will also get to move up on the mite track, and I will also gain a tile from the reserve, and I gain this tile here. That's kind of nice, it's a brown one. I have two brown ones here. Now, I mentioned before that you can trade in tiles for resources, so you can trade them in by color. So if I traded in these two here, I could gain a brown resource for that. So you have to trade in two of the same color to get one color of that resource. Also, you can trade in two of the same color resource for one of a different resource. But now that my turn's done, I discard my cards as well. And then we're gonna go to the end of round. And so the end of round, you discard the leftmost building tile, the one in the leftmost space, and there's not one there, so this gets moved down. You'll add one tile to the, the rightmost spot now. And so then you draw and replace any of the tiles on the land here. And so this one here and this one here. And we'll also take the standees back here because we are ready for our next turn. And so for my next turn, I think I want to go to region number three here. And I want to place a worker on one of these two spaces. If I place it on this one, then I can summon the god. And I think that's what I want to do. All right, so for my turn, I think I want to go to region three. So I will play the three. The question is how much strength do I want to go with? Four or five? And now he's used up his six. So maybe I'll go with five to try and guarantee that I go there. We'll see what the AI chooses here. And they're going to choose five as the region they want to go to with a strength of two. So they will go to five. I'll go here. We each gain a tile. I'll gain this tile here because it's another brown tile. And maybe I'll turn these in for resources. We'll see. But the AI will go here. It's going to choose the, its most preferred god tile here. So I'll gain this one. Now if the AI summons this turn, then it will gain a plus one strength to that summoning. But since I'm in the lower region here, I get to go first, so I will place a worker. And let's see, I think I will go here. I will, I'll place this worker down here at the bottom. And then I'm gonna summon this god. Now, I don't have any tiles in my pyramid with that summon, but I can use this tile here. And the way this works is I won't be able to place a marker on the temple for the summoning, but I will turn in this tile. And for this god in particular, it says to deplete a production site matching the color of any tile used for summoning and place it on the calendar track and gain resources equal to the action strength. Now the action strength is one because I only used one tile for the summoning, but I will deplete this one here, placing it up here, and then I will gain a brown resource for that. And then now I get to choose if I want to produce or build. Well, I don't need to produce right now, but I want to build. So I definitely want to build this one here. And this one is going to cost me only two resources because it's in the left slot of the building track. So it's one resource less. So I get to choose which ones, but I don't have two whites. So it's got to be a white and a brown. And so I will pay those resources here, adding it to my building area here. Now there's a bonus here that lets me place a player disc on one of the temples. So we'll have to choose which one in just a moment, but I will place it here. Now this is gonna grant me bonuses for area majorities later. Now let's see, which one do I wanna place on here? I think I'll place it on this one because I think this one's gonna score me the most. Again, this one here lets me gain points based off of how many temples are scored. So that's pretty cool. And I'll place it on the leftmost spot. And it's gonna gain me two points. So that's really nice. And so that ends my turn. And so the AI is gonna place a worker. It's gonna choose a city that's adjacent to another region that has a building tile still available. And then it's gonna choose a god that matches in its pyramid, which is, the rain god is not in one of these areas here around number five. So it won't choose the rain god. It would choose its most preferred god, which is the rain god. So we skip that again. And then it would choose areas where it doesn't have a majority yet. Well, it doesn't have a majority in any of these areas. And so then it goes to the topmost city in that region. So this one here, again, that's topmost according to the board orientation here. 
Now, it doesn't have any tiles for that god, so it won't summon the god this turn. It looks like I forgot to move the resource tracker down when the, the AI paid for that tile, so I fixed that here. All right, so now the AI is going to build. It can only build one tile because it just has one worker in that city that it just placed a worker in. And so it's going to build a, a tile that gives him the most fame. And so he has two options here. So he has this tile here matches the color, the black. So that would gain him one fame because the, mac, um, the black matches up. But this one matches the icon, so that would gain him one fame. So he's going to choose between these two, and when deciding a tie in this case, he would choose his most preferred god, which is this one here. So we'll place it right here, costing one resource. And since the icons match, he gains one fame. And so now our turns are done. We discard our cards, and then we move on to end of round. Once again, you replenish the, the tiles, the pyramid tiles on the board. You get rid of a building in the leftmost space if there is one, and there isn't this time. Move everything down and draw a new one. And then you remove both the standees back over here. And we're ready for our final choice. Now I have one and four to choose from. The AIs used a one, six, five, and two. So it definitely has another two, a three, and a four in there. <laughs> so if I choose four, there's a good chance I will lose that conflict, and I don't want the AI to move up the might track. But four would be better for me, because I'm trying to build around this area so I can gain this building. Once again, once you have workers around an entire region, then you gain the building in that area for free. So I definitely want this building. So I am going to use these two, the four and the one. We just hope he doesn't draw a four here. Oh no, it is a four and it's a two. Now, unfortunately, that means I lose because we both have zero swords. So we just go off of these cards here. He has a two, I have a one. So I will lose in that case. Now, you should have put the uh, standees in that region because my standee is now going to go to a different region, which actually works out for me because an adjacent region is either the five or the three here, which can still work towards me getting a worker in those areas. So it's not so bad. However, the AI will move up on the might track, gaining one resource for that. And, but I will gain one sword for losing that. So that, that increases my power a little bit. Now I do need to choose where I want to go, and I think, I don't know actually. I think I'll go here. Yeah, I think that's a good spot. And I'm going to gain this tile here. And the reason why I'm gaining that one is that I got a lot of browns lined up here. I think that's worth it. And I definitely want to add one of these to the board. So, because I want to summon this god at some point. He lets me lay down workers. Now, based off of the AI's priorities, it's going to choose this leftmost tile this time. And since I'm in the 5 region and the AI is in the 4, the AI goes first. It'll place its worker. It's going to go for its most preferred god here in this case. And then it's going to summon that god because it has two of those tiles in there. And so in the rule book here, it tells you what the AI does for that god. And it says, of all production sites that match the colors used in his summoning, deplete the one at which you have the most adjacent workers, not the AI. Break ties in favor of production sites at which King Pakal has the fewest adjacent workers, then the tied production site closest to the top of the board. And we place it on the calendar track, and he gains one resource for each action strength. Now, I do want to mention one thing. If he has at least three tiles in his reserve, and one of those tiles matches that god, he'll spend that tile to increase the strength, but he doesn't have one matching here. So his strength is two. Now he's gonna choose one of the production sites next to one of my workers that matches the color. We have black and yellow. I only have two workers out on the board. So the it's gonna choose the topmost one that matches, and it's gonna be this black one here. It otherwise would have been this yellow, but it's further down on the board. So this one gets depleted, and we place it right here. Then he'll gain two resources for that, again, for his action strength. And then he's going to go on to build. He can only build one tile. He's going to go for the one that gives him the most points. Again, he has to move in this order here. So we're number three here. It's going to cost one resource. He'll build this one because it matches color of the one next to it. So he'll gain one fame for that. I did forget, though, to award him a placement on the tile here that matches the god he summoned. And it's this one here. And it'll also gain him two points for that. So now he's in the lead, four to two. And so now his turn is done, and it's my turn. 
I will place this one right here. And I don't think I'm gonna try and summon that god from just using this tile. I don't think it's worth it. What that god does basically is uh, let me move a worker as many spaces as I have action strength. So I could, if I wanted to, move this worker over here and gain majority, but I'm gonna try and gain majority another way before we reach that cartoon celebration. And so I will go on to build. I can only build one tile. I will build this one here. It's gonna cost my only resource I have, the brown resource here. And I'm not gaining any points because neither the color nor the icon match. All right, so it's the end of the turn. We remove the standees here. Adding tiles, the pyramid tiles back to the regions where we took one. Remove that last building tile there, shift these down and gain another here. All right, since I only have zero cards in my hand, I gain all my cards back. The AI only has one, so it's gonna gain all its cards back as well and we're gonna shuffle these up. Now for me, I really wanna go to the three region or the two region, I, either one will work, but I wanna be able to place a worker here. I will gain this building for free. I think that's gonna be best. So the question is, which one do I wanna go to? I could go to two just to try and get this wild because wilds are kind of nice. Maybe that's what I will do. So we will choose two. And since I wanna go there so bad, it will be a six. That's what we're gonna use. Now let's see what the AI says. And the AI has a six. Now that's gonna become their second card. And so their first card is going to be the five. Again, that's because there is no six region in the game, so the AI will always make that its power card. But in this case here, we will not have a conflict with the AI going to five and me going to two. I will gain this tile like I wanted, and the AI is gonna gain one that matches its most preferred type there. Since I'm in the lower region, I get to go first. I will place the worker here. And now that I have one, two, three, four workers surrounding this particular region, this one only has four cities around it, then I will gain this building tile for free, which is awesome. So I gain this one here, and this is really gonna help me gain points during the regional scoring. But on top of that, the bonus here is to gain a roll card. So I get to look at all three of these cards here and choose the one I want. And so of these three here, well, I'll tell you what they do. First of all, this one, when I build, the first two builds each round, or the round that this card is played in, get discounted by one resource, and that's pretty nice. Now this one here, when I do a production, I can deplete any of the production sites on the board. And so it doesn't have to be one that's next to the worker that I place this round. And then I will not only gain the resources, depending on how many workers are next to that production site, I will gain two additional resources of my choice. That sounds really good. And this last one here lets me avoid conflicts, basically. So when things are revealed, I can then choose an adjacent region to the number of my left-hand card and place my standee there. I guess it could help me engage in conflicts too, but... I don't think that one's as worth it as this one here. So I, I wanna get those additional resources. So that's one I'm gonna choose and we'll add it to my hand. Okay, so now the AI is gonna go and it's gonna place its worker. So it's gonna place one on one of the sites that doesn't have his worker. And in this case here, it's gonna choose one that matches the most tiles built in its pyramid. And it's this one here. So it's gonna choose this spot right here. And then it's gonna go ahead and summon that god. And so what happens with this one here is the AI is gonna get one of his cards back. Now, if one of these was his roll card, he would choose that one, but these are gonna get shuffled up and then we're gonna choose one at random, shuffling it back into this pile here. And the other one is gonna to go to discard. If he had more action strength, he would gain more cards back. And then the next thing he's gonna do is lay down one of his workers. And now it has to be one of the workers in adjacent to his region here. And so he's gonna choose where he can win a majority, but he already has majority in both of those cities that he has workers in. The one containing the fewest total workers, but that's tied as well. A city adjacent to a production site? Well, they are. <laughs> and then a city matching his most preferred god, which neither of these are, so the one at the top of the board. So it's gonna be this one here. That one gets laid down. Again, that now counts as two workers instead of one. And the last thing there is he's gonna get one of these to the board again. Now he's gonna... Actually, he already has that one. So this one here is that god, and he, he, since it or, it's already here, this is one that was placed at the beginning of the game, it gets moved to the leftmost spot here. 
that it can go to, gaining two points. So he's once again taking the lead. And now he's going to build, and he can only build one. Again, this is, it's, this is his worker here, so there's only one worker. And he's going to build the one that's going to get him the most points, but none of them do. So he's going to choose the one that matches his most preferred god, which is this one here. Place it right in here, costing one resource. Again, he doesn't earn any points from this because it neither matches color nor symbol. With both our turns done, we have our end of round effects. And so I definitely want to go to the fourth region, mainly because I want to summon that god, the same god that he did, because I want to be able to lay down a worker, and I want to work towards getting this building for free here. So I only need two more workers in this region to accomplish that. And so I will play my four, my roll card, because I'm planning on producing this round, and then my five here, because that's the highest number I have, because I definitely want to go here. And then we'll check the AI. The AI is playing the one, and then it'll play the three. So it gets to go there without any issue and I get to go down here. And so the AI is gonna choose one of the tiles there. Uh, again, it's gonna match the color at this point that he has the most of and it's either black or yellow, both of these do. So we'll take the leftmost one here. For me, I think I will take this one here since it'll match up with that same God or I can actually increase the power if I wanted to. And it's the AI's turn. It's going to end up choosing this one to place a worker on. Once again, it's going to summon that sun god. It'll gain one of its cards back, so we'll shuffle these three cards here, and then shuffle its uh, new draw pile here. And then it's going to lay down one of its workers, and it will lay down the one with its most preferred god here. And now it'll build. It can build one. That's all. And uh, it actually is going to build a, a building if it can. And it can, it gets the discount here, so it'll build this building here. Now when you build a building for the AI, of course you're going to reduce the resources here. And then you're going to flip it over because it doesn't matter what's on the face of the building. Now it'll go here and it'll give the AI a free draw from the tile bag. And this is the tile here. And again, I want to remind you that when building for the AI, you go in order. And this is number five, the building, the building. So we just built that building, so the next thing it'll do to build is build up here. Now for my turn, I want to place a worker, and I will place it here, because I, I definitely want to try and lay down either this worker or this worker. Either one will help. And I do get to summon this god, because I have one of the tiles here. So I will get to place my player marker right here in this spot. And that's going to gain me one point for that. And I can take back one of my cards. Of course, I'm going to take back my roll card. <laughs> that's definitely worth it. And then I get to lay down a worker that's adjacent to a production site that matches the color of the summoning. The color of the summoning is this color here. Now, if I needed to, I could have spent this blue one here to make that the color. But I don't need to because we have a brown production site here in between both of these cities. And I will lay down this worker here. And so now I have majority in that city. It doesn't matter what action strength you have for this particular god summoning, you only get to lay down one worker. And then I get to choose if I want to build or uh, produce, and I definitely want to produce this round. So I will produce the, the brown site here because that's going to give me the most resources. So first of all, I gain three resources. See, there's one worker here and two here next to that production site. So I will gain three brown resources automatically. And then I get to choose, because of my roll card, I get to choose two additional resources of any colors. So I'm really tempted to get blue because I think I might try and build this building here, which is two blues and a brown. I think that might be worth it. So I will gain two of the blue resources. And now, I've, now I'm swimming the resources, this is good. But now there we're only one production site away from the Katoon celebration. So that's going to happen real soon. Now that my turn's done, we have our end of round effects. All right, so if I go to four or five, I will be able to place a worker here and gain this building for free. And that building's kind of nice because when I produce, I get to count the AI's workers as well. So I can get a ton of resources that way. So that would be nice to get this building. I think it's worth trying for. Besides, it'll give me one more worker in a city where I can possibly have majority. I'm gonna play it risky though and not go for a lot of combat strength. So I'll play the four for the region, three for my strength. Let's see what the AI plays. They play their two and a two. So they're going here and then I'm going here. Now they're gonna gain this tile, which matches their god, of course. And then I will gain, let's see, which one do I want? 
I guess I could go with this one here. Now the AI is gonna place a worker. It's only gonna place for one of these two slots here because it already has workers in those three. So it'll place the one that's closest to the top since neither of these have tiles matching in the pyramid. And so it can't summon that god right now, so that's not gonna happen. And it can't build anything, so it's gonna produce resources. And so he's gonna choose the production site where he has most workers next to it. It's gonna be this one here because he has two here and two here, so that's a total of four. He'll take this, place it here. Now that's gonna signify at the end of this round, we will have a Ka Toon celebration, but he will gain four resources for that action. Now for my turn, I will place the worker in this one spot here, and I will gain this tile for free, which is awesome. So I'll place it here. It gives me one weapon for that, so increase that here. And so I'm gonna build this turn, and I think I'm gonna build this one here. The reason why I'm building this one, I, I could build this one, this would give me two fame too. If I, if I built this one right here, I would gain two fame because it matches icon and color. But I wanna have this one built just because I wanna be able to summon that god and get my marker on the board that way. So I will place this one here. It's gonna cost me one brown resource and I will gain one fame for that placement. All right, so we have the end of turn here, discarding our cards as usual. Of course, placing tiles back out, removing the building from the left the most place, moving everything down and placing it. Now we're gonna go into the Ka Atun celebration because once again, we have reached our end of the calendar. So this is gonna get moved down one space. And then we're gonna score the temples here. Now only three temples are being scored. Looks like we're both gonna get points on this one, but separate points on these here. So we'll first start with this one here. This one scores for however many temples are being scored. So I will gain three points because three temples are being scored. This next one here scores for how many buildings are in one player's building area the, the most. And I have three, so we each get three points. So he's at nine and I'm at 10. And this last one here scores for however many different tiles in one person's inventory. Now I have three here. He has one, two, three, four different tiles. So he's gonna gain four points off of that, bringing them to 13. And now we go on to scoring majorities. So again, if you have the majority, you gain two points in a city. If you're tied, you gain one point. So he gains two, four, six, seven. This one's tied. Then nothing here, and then one here. So he gains eight points. And that's gonna bring him up to 21. Now for me, if I have the majority, I am gonna gain an extra two points from my two buildings here. So let's see how this goes. So I'll gain four, eight, 12, 16, and then 17, 18. Wow, that was quite a lot. That's the most I've ever gained from that. So we go all the way up to 28. That was a big boost. And then we would check for a game end if this had been the third Ka'a tune, or if the pyramid had been filled, or if somebody placed all their workers, then the game would end. Otherwise, we go on to the new round. And so we take the depleted production sites, and we're going to shuffle these up, replace them randomly on the board in the empty spots, and then the last one will go in that first space on the calendar track here. And then the last thing that happens is we return all player markers from the temples. So you have to earn these all over again, but the AI for the second round or the second year is gonna gain one again to the lowest preferred spot here. So it gains this one here. Now the third time, it won't have any starting out on that third year. But if you're playing medium or hard mode, it'll have multiple player tokens on those tiles throughout the years. All right, and so we're ready to move on here. And I only have these two cards to use. So I have the four and the one. And I have a tough decision to make when I'm gonna use these cards because if I use the one, which it'll probably guarantee that I'll get to go to the one space because he's already used his one for the round, I, it doesn't really help me a whole lot. Except maybe placing a worker here and that'll give me a majority in that space and it'll put me one closer to getting this free building if I want that free building. But if I use the four and go here, I can add a worker to one of these places, especially this one here, which will allow me to lay down a worker somewhere else. And I will be able to build a couple of things, maybe a couple pyramid tiles. So those are the choices I have to make here. Perhaps the safe way is to go to number one because I will be able to summon this god and that's gonna get me on the score tracker right away. So let's go ahead and do that. 
I'll go to the first region. Let's see what the AI does. Oh, they were going to number four and with three strength. And I don't think I would have been able to beat that. I guess I might have been able to beat that or tie it because I have two swords, but it, it wasn't worth it. And so he'll go down here and I'll go up here. He's going to take the tile that matches his preferred god and then I get to choose one. And I'm going to take this one here. Maybe I will increase the strength of that summon because it is my turn right now and I will place a worker here and then I'm going to summon that god. Now in summoning that god, I have to remove one of my workers. And it says in the uh, guide here that it has to be a worker that is next to a production site matching the color of any tile used in the summoning. So I only have the one Jaguar tile here. So if I summon right now, it's going to have to be next to a yellow production site. So I could remove the worker there, but I don't know if I want to do that one. Maybe I'll remove this worker here because it's next to this production site here. I think that's what I will do. I'll remove it, but I'm also going to use this extra tile here to enhance the summoning of the god. And then I get to place my player marker on that particular temple. That will gain me two points, which is nice. And the rest of the summoning for that god is gain one fame for each action strength. And I may move up one space on the might track. Well, I definitely want to do that. I'm going to gain two fame for that. Move one up on the might track and that will gain me one resource of my choice. Now looking at the things that I want to build here, I definitely want to build more tiles. I want to get further up this track here. So I, I think I need a yellow or one of any color that'll work there. So I will, I will gain the yellow resource. I think that's a good call. And now I get to choose if I want to build or produce. Since I used my roll card, remembering that my roll card gives me extra resources, I think I want to use this one. And I get to choose a site that's next to any amount of my workers. But I'm, I'm going to go ahead and choose the one that's already next to the city that I placed a worker in. I'm going to use this one here because I have a total of three workers next to it. There's two here and one here. So that's going to give me three of the black resource. And that's quite a lot. <laughs> and then I get to gain two of any color. I'll gain one white and I think one more yellow. I'm just going to go with a lot of resources here. Now, of course, that production site gets put on the calendar track and I may, I'm, I'm thinking that I may try and rush the end game by forcing that calendar track to move. We'll, we'll see how this goes. Because as of right now, he's got a lot of resources and he's going to be building a lot and he's going to be trying to challenge me for area majorities. And speaking of which, it is his turn. So he's going to place a worker and it's going to go in one of these two spaces here. And so he's going to choose from these two gods here, but neither of them meet the first criteria, which is one that matches the most tiles built in his pyramid. The next one is his most preferred god, and neither of these two are his most preferred god. This one is down here at the bottom, but he's already got a worker there. So he's going to choose to build to the, the closer to the top of the board. So he's going to choose this one here, and we'll place his worker right there. Now, he will not summon that god because he does not have any of his tiles in that pyramid. But he is going to choose to build, and, in, and so he's going to build in this spot here because it's number six. Last time he built here with the building. So we're on to number six here. It's going to cost him two resources to build. He can only build one because he has one worker. And he's going to choose the one that's going to get him the most points, and it's going to be this one here. And so he'll place it right here, and it's a wild one, so he'll choose a color that's going to get him the most points. It can be black or yellow here. And since there's a tie there between those two, he's going to choose the one that has the most of that color in his supply. He has two blacks and only one yellow. So we'll place a black resource token here. But he gains a total of three points. Two from matching the same symbols here, and then one from matching the same color. So he'll gain three, moving up to 24 points now. And that ends our turns. So we'll do the end of round effects. Now I get all my cards back because I'm out of cards. He's down to one card, so we're gonna shuffle his cards. Now I am looking at a couple different options here. See, I like the idea of taking this building for free. If I go to region five and place a worker here, I will gain that building for free. However, that building's not gonna be that useful to me because what it is is when you uh, gain a pyramid tile after you place your standee in its region, you can actually choose to gain one from an adjacent region instead. That's not really useful to me at this point in the game, so I don't know that I need this building. 
Now, if I go to the five or the four region and place a worker here, I will be able to summon this god, but then I will have three workers, which means I can build three times. I just realized that my building here gives me uh, resources when I do a produce based off of uh, the AI's workers as well. So I should have gained one more of those black resources here. As far as my choice goes here, I, I definitely think I want to go here or here. Probably here because I want to get this tile here and I want to be able to build multiple times. So I will choose number four. I'm not going to use my special roll. I'm not going to use my special roll card this time because I want to save that for a produce. So I will use these two, a four and a six, and let's see what the AI does. They're going to do the six. Now this will become their second card. So their first card is a five. All right, so they're gonna to go to five. I will go to four. I will gain this tile here. And based on his priority, he's gonna end up gaining the leftmost tile here. All right, since I'm in the lower number region, I will get to place first, and I do wanna place it here. And that's gonna let me summon the god. So I will place my marker up here, gaining two points. And then I get to summon the god. And I have, right now, I have one action strength. Now I don't think I need to increase the action strength because I get to take back a card. So I can take this six back and put it back in my hand. I don't think I need that four. So I don't need to increase the action strength, but I can lay down a worker adjacent to a production site that matches the color of the summoning and the color is brown because of the tile in my pyramid. So I think I will lay down this one here. It's next to a brown production site because now this gives me the majority in this area. And now I get to go on to the build action and I get a total of three builds. And so I definitely want to build this one here. This is a really nice tile here. See what it does is anytime I get an adjacency bonus, I get a bonus point. That's when I'm building pyramid tiles and I'm going to be building pyramid tiles during this turn. So I'll gain this one here. It's going to cost me two blue resources and one white resource. But because I built the one in the far right slot, I gain two points for that. And then I will place it here. And this bonus here for placement gives me one tile free from the bag. So I'll add that here. And then I will build two more. And I think I'll build this one first. And this one's gonna get placed right here. And so it costs me two different resources, but one of them has to be the color of that tile. Again, it's two different resources for the second level, three different resources for the third level, and four different for the fourth level. And so I'll play a brown and a black here, and that's gonna gain me a lot of points. See, the symbols match here, so that's two points. And then the color matches here, so that's two points, and the color matches here, so that's two points, that's six points, if I'm calculating that correctly. That's a lot of points. I'm gonna double check it here, Let's see, the Royal Monument. Whenever you build tiles into your pyramid, gain two fame instead of one for each adjacency bonus you score. Wow, I, I think that's the right reading on that. I've never scored so much with one uh, placement. So that was really good. And I have one more build left. So I kind of want to build this one in this corner here. Yeah, I'll build it here. Now, which color am I going to choose? I have some options here. Well, I have yellow, brown, and black. I think I will choose the yellow, and uh, let's see, that'll cost me one yellow, and, and that's all. I'll place the yellow on here because it was a wild tile. Now this one here doesn't give me any bonus, but it does match the symbol here, but not the color. I could have placed a brown here, and maybe that's what I should have done, huh? You know what, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm gonna take that back and place a brown here, and that way I'll get two bonuses. It's gonna be an extra four points. It brings me up to 46. Maybe next turn I should get this tile here because that's going to gain me a lot if I place it in this spot right here. But I will need some brown resources to do that. Although I could just exchange some resources like these two black ones for one brown. We'll see. All right, so now my turn is done. It's the AI's turn. It's going to place a worker and it's going to go in this spot here after all the priority checks. So it'll place it there. And it doesn't have that god in its pyramid, so it's not going to summon right now but it will go on to the build. It'll build one. It's gonna cost two resources because this is a second level and it'll do the one that gives it the most points. Now, if it uses its preferred God tile, that one will get it two points. If he uses this one here, that one will get it two points. And if he uses this one here, that one will get it two points. And he's gonna choose this one here because it's the most preferred God tile that he hasn't scored in the temple yet. 
So that one is going to gain him two points, bringing him up to 26. All right, so that's the end of the turn here. Now I definitely wanna go in the two region because I wanna place a worker here, I think. Maybe here or there, I'm not sure, but here at least because that'll give me a majority. And I wanna produce this round, so I'm gonna use my roll card, the number four card. Let's see what the AI chooses. They're gonna to go to region number one and they're using their roll card as well. So they go here and I go here. And he'll choose this tile here as being the closest to the most preferred god there. As for me, I will choose this tile here because I wanna build it right in this spot here. It's gonna give me a lot of points. And for his worker, since he has a worker in every city, he's gonna choose his uh, most preferred god here. And so he will summon that god and it's a strength of four. He's gonna deplete one of the production sites and it'll be the one that's next to most of my workers. And it looks like this one here because I have four workers next to it. So he'll deplete, deplete this one here, placing it there. And then he's gonna gain a total of four of the action strength. And actually he will spend this one too to increase it one more because he had more than enough tiles in his uh, inventory there. And he also gets one of his markers to this god here, giving him two points as well. And so now he's gonna build and he can build three things. So we first start with this one here where he, it's gonna cost him two resources and he'll build the tile that scores him the most points. And the one that scores him the most points is this one here because it matches the symbol here and it matches the color here. So that's gonna score him two points. And he'll also get to move one up on the might track. So first we give him the two points he moves one up on the might track. And so his bonus for that is laying down a worker. And so he's gonna lay down a worker where he can gain the majority. And there's multiple places where that is. So this one here, the bottom one here, and this one here. And so he's gonna go with the one that's closer to the bottom of his list. And it looks like this one is right here. So now he has majority of this one. Now that was only one build and he's gonna build a building as well. So he'll build the cheapest one. This one will cost two resources because of the discount. He'll place it right here. He'll gain two points plus four more points because of easy difficulty. So that brings him up to 36. And now at this point, he doesn't have enough resources to do his third build. He would need three resources here, but he would actually be able to do it if he only had two resources because then he would turn in these two tiles here for one resource. But since that is not the case, the rules state that he gets two fame instead, so it brings him up to 38. Now it's my turn and I get to place a worker. And I think what I wanna do is I wanna place the worker right here. I know I talked about placing it here and the reason why I wanna place it here is I wanna summon that god. That way I can place my marker on the board there. But on top of that, it does a couple things. First, I need to choose a color. Well, I only have brown in the supply here, so I will choose brown. And then I get action strength, which is two. Now I could up it with this and make it three, but I won't. But what I get to do for that is I get to move a worker. And I have an action strength of two, so I can move it two spaces. So right now, if I take this worker here and move it, I think down to this bottom one here, that's where I'm gonna place it. And now I have majority in this area and I still have majority in this area. On top of that, I'm allowed to trade resources one for one. And so I can trade the black for the brown since I chose brown as my color or I could have traded a, a brown resource for any other resource but in this case I wanted to trade for a brown not with a brown and of course I get my marker up here and that's going to gain me two extra points and now I have to decide if I want to build or produce and I think I want to produce this turn because I will gain a lot of resources. I will gain a total of six. Again, my, my building down here allows me to count the AI's color. And so I will gain three resources from there and there. So a total of six resources, <laughs> that's quite a lot. I don't think I've ever had so many resources in a game, but maybe this will be worth it because maybe I can actually finish off my pyramid. This will be the first time I would finish a pyramid. We'll see if I can do that. And it's the end of the turn and we move on to the next turn. Oh, I almost forgot. I actually gain a couple extra resources from that. So I might as well gain a blue. Actually, let's, yeah, a blue and a brown. I, th I think that's going to be best there. That's a lot of resources. And so I made a mistake earlier, and I'm going to correct it now. When the AI had used the rain god summon, I forgot to count the extra action strength from his roll card. 
So he actually had one more action strength, which means he would have had one more resource gain from that action, which means he would have been able to build a tile. So first we're gonna take back the two points that he got for not being able to build the tile. Next, we're gonna choose which tile he's gonna build. And so he's gonna build one in this space here that gives him the most points. And so the only two that he can build are these two here. And he'll choose this one here because he doesn't have a marker in that temple yet. So he'll gain this one to the spot, but we have to get rid of two of these tiles to gain him that extra resource he needs to make that pyramid build. And so you just do it by random. They don't have to match up. So he has that one left, spending the other two, giving him the third resource, which spends all three. And now he's built the tile, and that tile gives him four points. So he's actually up to 40 points now. So for this next turn here, I definitely want to be able to build again, and I want to build a lot. So I think I will try and place a worker on this spot again to summon that god again. That way he can lay down another worker elsewhere. So my only option is to use my five card. And then I will use my six. Well, he's not gonna go to five. So I don't need to use my six. So we'll save the six. And I think I will use the one instead for my strength. And so he'll draw his cards here. He's gonna go to two. And let's see, here we go. I go to five. And so he'll take this tile here. And for me, I think I will take this one. I think that's worth it. Especially if I place it right here, it's gonna give me a lot of points. Now he gets to place a worker first, and since he has all these towns covered except this last one, and there's a building there, he's gonna place it right here. That way he gains this building for free, placing it on his board. It'll gain him a weapon as the bonus, but also four more points, bringing him up to 44. Now he does not have that god in his pyramid, so he will not be summoning it. And he doesn't have any resources, so he's going to produce. And so he can produce from these three spots here, and since they all are gonna produce the same amount because he has two workers adjacent to each of them, he'll choose the one where I have the most workers adjacent to, and it's these two here. And since they're, they're tied up on that, then we have to choose one at random. And so he chose the brown one here, so the black one goes back down here. Now he'll gain two resources from that, and that's all. On to my turn, I get to place my worker. I'm gonna place it right here, and I'm gonna activate that god. I have two action strength from my pyramid, which means I can take back two cards. And I think I will just go ahead and take, uh, let's see, I'll take both of these back. I think that's the right play. But then I get to lay down a worker. And so where do I want to lay one down? If I lay one down, well, I have to think about, we are scoring for the Ka'a Toon celebration in just a moment, because uh, he put down the last production site. So I definitely want one that's going to give me majority. So if I lay down this worker here, that gives me majority, two over one. Actually, I take that back. I cannot lay that one down because it's not next to a color used in the summoning. I have browns that are used in summoning. So the only worker that I have next to one and used in the summoning that is this one here. So if I lay down this worker, then I'm gonna tie up that location. I could have laid down one of these down here because there's a brown one down here, but I already have majority in those places, so it wasn't worth it. All right, so now I get three builds, and I'm definitely gonna take advantage of that. And so I wanna build this one here, this building. It's only one white and one black, which I have plenty of resources right now. And what it does is it gives me one additional build this turn. And so, or every build, uh, it gives me one additional build every round that I do build. And it's also gonna give me seven points for placing this tile here. So that brings me all the way up to 55. But now I get an additional build, so I can build three more tiles if I want. First of all, I am gonna build this one here into this space. And that's gonna give me all sorts of goodies here. First, let's pay for it. So it's gonna take one brown at least, and we'll use one white resource as the second one. Placing it here gives me one additional movement on the might track, and that gives me the ability to lay down a worker. So there we go. I get to lay down that worker after all. On top of that, I get a whole bunch of bonuses. This matches color, that's two points. This matches color and symbol, that's four more points, so six. And this matches color and symbol here. I get 10 points off of that. Again, I hope I'm calculating that right, using that, that building I have the right way. And so I have two more builds, and I kind of want to build this one in this space here. Again, it's gonna cost me a brown 
and one other color. We'll use white again because I have plenty of those. And so I match up symbol here, that's two points. Match up color here, two points, and color here, that's two more points. So we get another six points, bringing us to 71. So one more building left. I do have to use three different colors to do it. And let's see, should I do a different god? That'll give me the option of being able to summon that god in the next round. It's not going to give me any bonus points, but I, I wonder if I should have that option, or maybe I should just go with the jaguar here because it'll give me two extra bonus points. So that's what I'm going to do. I have to use three different resources for that, So and one of them has to be black because it matches that tile. So one black, one white, and one yellow. And that's going to gain me four points for the placement, and then two more points for the bonus here. So another six points, bringing me up to 77. All right, so the end of the round here, and there we go. And then we're gonna go on to the Ka'atun celebration. So first we're gonna score temples. And so this one doesn't score, that's unfortunate, but this one does. And it's whoever has the most uh, buildings, We I have five. So we each get five points. So that both helps, <laughs> helps both of us, but it keeps the distance the same. Now this one here is going to score for the most different type of tiles in the inventory, and it's two, so he's going to gain two points for that. This one here is most different type of resources. I have three, so I will gain three points for that. And this last one here is most different tiles in a pyramid. Now I have one, two, three here, and he's got one, two, three, four. And so I'll gain four points for that. And we'll remove these here. And then we're going to go on to majorities. And we'll start off with him. He has two, four, five, seven, nine. So he's going to gain a total of nine points, bringing him up to 60. And let's see how much I get. Remembering, I get four points per majority. So four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 21. <laughs> wow, that is crazy. This is definitely my best scoring game ever. Which, uh, which means that maybe I should have upped the difficulty this time around. Now we aren't quite at game end yet. Nobody's placed their last worker or filled the pyramid, but I sense that's coming soon. We will move the Ka'atun marker down one space, and then we will shuffle the different production sites here and place them back on the board. So let's see, one, two, three, and four, and the last one goes in the top spot there. All right, and starting this new round, he is going to have to shuffle his cards. I don't because I reclaimed some cards last round. And that's one of those nice things about summoning that god is you don't have to worry about getting your cards back. You can just keep going. Now, I definitely want, I, I kind of want to just build my pyramid if I can. I think I need to do one more produce action, and then I will be able to build the rest of my pyramid. Let's see if I can pull this off here. So I definitely need my my roll card to do it, and then my number six, because I don't want to lose that spot. We'll see what the AI draws, and it is a number three. So he's going to choose the Jaguar tile, and I will choose, I guess it really doesn't matter which one I choose. So I will choose the yellow tile. Now he's going to place a worker right down in this spot here and trigger that god action. So he's going to look at all the production sites that match color used in summoning. We have black, yellow, just black and yellow. So he's going to choose one of those two sites. And it's going to be the one that I, ha I have the most workers next to. And it looks like it's this one here. So he's going to deplete this one here. And it'll go on the track. And I forgot to use this tile here to increase his action. Because he had at least three tiles in his inventory. So he used that tile to increase it. So now he has four, no, five action strength. Which is going to give him a total of five resources. Bringing him up to seven. Now, because that blue tile was used in the summoning, he could have chosen this one here, but the tie favors the, the one that's closer to the top of the board. And he also gets his marker there, gaining him two points. And then he's going to go on to build. And now he's going to be able to build both of these tiles. So he'll start with this one here, because it will match this symbol here, gaining him an extra point. That'll cost three resources, bringing him down to four left. And that'll gain him four points bringing him up to 66, and then he'll place his other one here. That's going to cost th four resources, but it'll gain him seven points, bringing him all the way up to 73. Now, of course, this is going to trigger the end game because he has put all of the tiles in his pyramid, but we still get to finish out the round, so I still get to go. Now, I'm going to place a worker, and I'm not sure where. 
I think I'll place the worker here and summon that god. And the main reason is because that gives me a marker on that temple, which will gain me two points right away. And it's going to end up giving me five points at the end of the game. Now, of course, I can lay down a worker. And I think the one I want to lay down is this one. It has to be next to a production site that matches the color. They're brown. So I'll lay down this one here. That gives me a majority in this space at the bottom. Now I can build or produce. I wanted to produce, but I didn't expect him to finish his pyramid. So I guess I'm going to build, and I can only build one because I, I only have three different resources here. So I will build one, and I, I guess it's going to be this one. I guess it really doesn't matter which of these I build. It's going to give about the same amount of points. I'll get a total of six points off of this build, bringing me up to 118. I do obviously have more workers to build, but I don't have enough resources to do that. All right, so now we're going to go into the final Ka'a Toon celebration. <laughs> it's going to be a rather quick one because we only score two different temples. So I'm going to gain five points for the temple that I'm at because it gives it on based on how many buildings are built in a player's area. And then he's going to get points based off of how many different tiles. And I think he has five different ones here. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so that's going to gain him five points. And then we go on to majorities. He has two, four, five, seven nine looks like nine points is what he's getting there bringing him up to 87 and let's see how many i get i get four eight 12 16 20 21 again so that's going to bring me all the way up to 144 and with that, I have won the game. I think I definitely need to up the difficulty. I do realize that I may have got some of his priorities wrong. Uh, again, there's a lot of priorities to go through, and some of them are, are harder to keep track of than others. So I apologize if I got some of those wrong. But there you have it. That was the tutorial and solo playthrough of Ahau, the rulers of Yucatan. This is quite the game. Now, this is probably one of the most difficult tutorials I've done. And I will be doing a first impressions uh, later on. I, I've played this game four times now, and I, I will be doing a first impression. So if you're looking to find out about this game, stay tuned for that, and I'll give you my opinions there. Also recognize this is a David Digby solo mode, and I happen to love David Digby. He's a great solo designer. So kudos to him for providing a formidable opponent. And like I said before, there are added levels of difficulty where the AI scores more points for building buildings. And do realize that the game comes with uh, three levels of difficulty that uh, change how he scores on building buildings and how many of the temple markers he gets right at the beginning of each new era. And so on hard mode, he starts with three markers on the temples. And then after the first cartoon, he has three. And then after the second cartoon, he has two. So he's scoring a lot more often on those temple tracks and gaining a lot more points. I think I'll have to play it one time on hard mode before I get my first impressions. Anyways, uh, let me know in the comments below what you thought of this playthrough. Point out any rules errors I may have made. Please also like and subscribe to this channel if you like the content you see here. And if you'd like to support me on Patreon, I have a link in the description. And I thank everyone who has supported me thus far. And I thank you very much for joining me on Tabletop for One. Have a great night.